Uh, I came to America at the age of 17. I remember looking out of the airplane and seeing the skyline of New York as the plane descended on JFK. I remember seeing the Statue of Liberty in the background. And I knew right away that my life was going to be different from that moment on. Uh, I intuitively realized that I was going from the margin of the world, in my case, a small town on the outskirts of Bombay, India, to the center. And I also recognized that in America, there was such a thing as an American dream. India doesn't have a dream. No other country has a dream. But this American dream is a dream not just of economic opportunity or success, but it's ultimately a dream where you can be the architect of your own destiny. Who is actually more powerful, the lion tamer or the lion? And the answer, of course, is the lion. But then we have a mystery. If the lion is more powerful, why is the lion so sycophantically and obediently following the lion tamer? And the answer is, the lion doesn't know its own power. Human nature is not motivated by debate. People, human beings, ever since the fall, have always been motivated by other things, including acquisitiveness and greed and lust and hatred and envy and revenge. And if those are in fact the motives of human nature, how can they be exempt from politics? How can we ignore them in the political horizon? Their goal actually is to steal America. Steal America. And, and by steal America, I don't mean that they want to control the federal budget. I don't mean that they want to control the gross domestic product, $17 trillion. No. I mean they want to control all the wealth of America. And that means all the land and all the buildings and all the companies and all the furniture in your house and your college fund and your retirement fund uh, and your big screen TV. Add all that wealth up. That's about $75 trillion. That's one big pile of dough. What does, what does the thoughtful Christian what does the person who recognizes that Hillary is bad news, but nevertheless has a sense of dignity, of decency, of self-worth do in this bizarre situation? You are kind of in the position of the abolitionists of the 19th century, who were the only people who were pure-hearted about slavery. The abolitionists believed that slavery was inherently evil and should be stopped now. And the abolitionists even today are like lamps of beacons of moral inspiration. But it's also true when we look back that the abolitionists politically were completely ineffective. The abolitionists by themselves could accomplish nothing.